My name is Professor Caroline Sturdy Coles and I'm a Professor of Conflict Archaeology and Genocide Investigation at Staffordshire University in the United Kingdom. I'm very sorry that I was unable to join you today in order to mark the commemoration of the site of Vavolnitsa Jewish Cemetery, but I wanted to share with you in my absence a few words about the project that we've undertaken at the site um, last year in August 2017. So I'm an archaeologist by training and I'm also the project lead for the Recording Cultural Genocide and Killing Sites in Jewish Cemeteries project, which is funded by the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance. The aim of this project is to raise awareness of the causes and consequences of cultural and actual genocide, mass violence against persons, using Je Jewish cemeteries desecrated by the Nazis as a pilot case study. And it's our hope that we can therefore directly tackle racism, xenophobia and hostility in the present. As part of this project, we're conducting new research into the relationships between the destruction of property by the Nazis and their collaborators at religious spaces, and then how many of those spaces were ultimately used as killing sites. We're undertaking a series of social action projects at selected Jewish cemeteries where cultural genocide and other forms of mass violence were carried out in the past and where neglect and vandalism is occurring in the present. And finally, it's our aim to disseminate the results of this research via a series of reports and via a digital platform, which will hopefully raise awareness of these sites um, and allow us to work with local stakeholders to protect them in the future. So in August 2017, I was fortunate enough to work in Vavolnitsa Cemetery, having identified that both cultural genocide, i.e. the destruction of the cemetery, took place during the Second World War by the Nazis, and also that the population, the male population in particular, of Vavolnitsa was rounded up and reportedly buried in the cemetery terrain. So we brought together a large group of people, local um, volunteers, and then also international volunteers and a number of organisations from around the world um, were, were very fortunate enough to be able to work together to try and restore the cemetery and find out more about what happened there. So these organisations included the Matt Saver Foundation, a US-based charity headed by Stephen Rees, and it was their goal to clear the vegetation within the cemetery, thus restoring it, um, trying to bring to light the Matseva, the tombstones that may lie beneath the vegetation. And we were very successful in doing this. We identified a number of Matseva um, that were hidden, was hidden amongst the vegetation. And we were able to document those tombstones using a technique known as photogrammetry, which essentially enables us to create three dimensional models of those individual tombstones. And in many cases, make visible the text that is written on them that for, for the most part, you can't see with the naked eye. So this has a restorative function in terms of engaging local volunteers and trying to make the cemetery visible again, trying to remember um, the people who were buried there before the war. And it also does something to bring back the memory of those people who the Nazis essentially tried to erase from history. A key part of cultural genocide was about weakening the fabric of the Jewish community, preventing them from burying their dead in the cemetery and destroying their heritage, destroying their ancestry through the destruction of tombstones and attempting to raise, erase the names of prominent ancestors who died in the past. So we hope through these visualisation techniques, we're able to not reverse the effects, of course, of cultural genocide, but go some way to bringing back the memory of the Jewish community in Vavolnitsa that existed before the war. And we used a number of mapping techniques to map the boundaries of the cemetery, to map the locations of those tombstones. And so therefore we will be able to provide a detailed map of what survives within the cemetery terrain today. And we hope this will be very useful for future projects which may aim to restore and protect the cemetery. And we're very grateful to the local authorities in Vavolnitsa for giving us the opportunity to undertake this work. We also work with a number of other foundations and crucially Studnia Pamienci were very vital in organising these local relationships and helping us um, gain the support of the local mayor who was incredibly supportive of the project um, and in terms of bringing together, as I mentioned, volunteers from all over Europe. We had, we had young people, we had um, older people, we had people from all different walks of life who came together to try to remember 
the people um, who had been not only part of the Jewish community before the war, but those who had been killed at the time um, during the Second World War by the Nazis. Um, and moving on to that point, another organisation we work with is Fundatia Zapomniana. Um, and like us, their main focus is on the identification of unmarked mass graves at sites of the Holocaust. And so I led a team which essentially used a wide range of what we call non-invasive archaeological methods in order to try and identify whether or not there were any unmarked burials within the terrain of this cemetery, as we have done at many sites elsewhere in Europe. And this methodology is vital because Jewish burial laws stipulate that you should not disturb the remains of victims buried in a grave. And therefore, it was absolutely important that we had to restore the cemetery to document the site without doing any form of excavation. So using the techniques I already mentioned, such as photogrammetry, mapping technologies, um, laser scanning, we were, we were able, we've been able at many sites across Poland to document the remains of Jewish cemeteries. In Wawelnica, we had hoped to be able to apply another technique known as ground penetrating radar, which is central in the searches for mass graves. We know that in March 1942, between 40 and 120 men were rounded up from Wawelnica and were taken um, to the um, cemetery um, and they were murdered. Other accounts say they were killed in the town square and that their bodies were taken up the hill to the cemetery and buried by the women of the town. Obviously the numbers of people killed varies hugely and the location of that mass grave, although it's suspected to be in the cemetery, is currently unknown. Um, unfortunately, due to the nature of the terrain and the nature of vegetation in Wawelnica, we were unable to apply ground penetrating radar at this stage. But we do have other forms of satellite imagery. We have um, a technique called LIDAR, which creates digital terrain models of the site, which we have, we have um, uh, analysed data from that technique. Um, and so we are hoping, as our, as our research progresses, that we may be able to pinpoint the location of the mass grave or graves within the cemetery terrain. At this present time, our research is very much ongoing. We hope to prepare the report over the next month or so. Um, and we're very much committed to working and continuing to work with the local authorities in Wawelnica, with Studnia Pamienci and our partners, to ensure that this important site is restored and protected. And hopefully we will find ourselves in a position where we can identify the exact location of the mass graves so that they could be marked, um, or a singular mass grave, so that it could be marked in the future and protected. Sites like Wawelnica are so important because the nature of the violence that happened there, um, as I've already mentioned, is several fold. And we can see a very clear evolution at many of these sites from the destruction of tombstones, which ultimately prevented um, the, the Jewish community from burying their dead, in the cemeteries, then these become isolated places where killings and burials of Jews from towns and villages all over Poland can take place. So this is at these sites, at the Jewish cemeteries, we can see how the Holocaust evolved. We can see how mass violence against the Jewish community evolved. And so I very much welcome the opportunity to, to work in Wawelnica, to continue working in Wawelnica. And I'm delighted that the commemoration ceremony that will take place today is taking place because it clearly shows that like our teams, there are other people who care about this important site, want to learn more about its history and hopefully protect it as an important site of memory for the future.